Hello, this is Scott. So today I'm going to um, present the second video in this time series and forecasting um, series. And so I mean to keep these very short as possible. Today we'll be talking about, this is R02. We'll be talking about um, R and R Studio, doing simple forecasting and time series, specifically univariates, bivariates, and the autocorrelation function. So um, again, these, these videos are meant to be uh, really hands-on, not a lot of uh, theory or math. Um, but if you, if you want some, some background, this is an excellent textbook um, that, that I actually use in teaching predictive analytics at uh, CUNY. So um, I highly recommend this, this book. Um, so with that, let me get straight into our studio. And if you remember from last time, we were using this library, uh, FPP, that you can get from the CRAN library download. And so I'm just going to, to run that. And you'll see in the console that it's, it's now um, loaded. And let me do some basic exploration. I know that there is a data frame in here called Fuel. So if I click on Run, um, that outputs that information to the console. And I can see that I've got a data set with um, what, seven, seven or eight different uh, columns or variables to it. Um, and we're going to be really focusing in on the uh, the carbon and the liters uh, variables here for this. So um, I didn't output all of the rows there in there um, that was limited. So how many rows are in here? I can use in row and determine that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, for fuel. And let me see how many rows are in this in that fuel variable, and there are 134 uh, rows here in this fuel variable. I can also look at the liters um, variable. So if I click on that, you can see the output here. Um, there are again 134 of these. Uh, looks like a lot of them are in the one, two, three range um, and so the the data varies so what if I'm interested in values where and, and this is the cubic inches uh, of an engine right so what if I'm interested in only engines that have a cubic liters um, less than two I'm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, data set based upon that right for this condition where the uh, displacement is less than two two liters. So I'm going to run that, and there I've, I've got it. And then now I do have this fuel two data set, and I can scan that data set here. Uh, it's a, it looks like a fairly short data. I'm curious how many rows are in that, and I can go back up here to my in rows, type in two. And now I've got 20 rows. Okay, so now I've got some data that I want to play with, and I want to summarize. I've just summarized the number of rows here, um, and I can look at this data, but what if I want some summary statistics? So these are, I'm interested in univariate or a single value or a single column, um, single variable statistics. And one of the most useful commands in, in R certainly is this summary. So if I run that, I'll get down here on the, the bottom left, I'll get the minimum value in the data set. Again, I'm, I'm pulling carbon, right? So this last column here, carbon. And the minimum is four. The first quartile is 6.10. That's the 25th percentile. The median or 50th percentile is 6.45. Um, the upper the upper quartile or third quartile is 6.6. .6, that's a 76, 75th percentile. 
I can immediately see that the interquartile range, third quartile minus first quartile is 0.5. That gives me a, an idea of the spread in the, the middle 50%. And then I can see the maximum is 6.8. You can also see that the mean is 6.2, which is less than, less than the median. So that tells me that this distribution is skewed left, actually, since the mean is less than the median here. So very quickly, I can get an idea of my, um, my data set with these univariate statistics. I can also do the standard deviation, which is important, especially in normal theory. Um, so I can see that the standard deviation is 0.744. All right. So those are some ideas of some, some quick summary statistics. We want to get into time series. So let's look at a different data set. Let's look at this uh, Australian beer um, data set within this library, FPP library. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing quarterly data from 1956 to 2008. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to limit this data set. I'm going to limit it in a different way. So looking at this, you can create, use the window function to do that, right? So I'm going to pull this data set off sphere, and I'm going to go from 1992 to 2006 and create a beer to data set. So now I have, I've created, by the way, uh, in the environment, I'm creating these data sets. It shows me that fuel two is created. Um, beer two is now created. Um, and then I can use that. So what I'm going to do is this data says I'm going to show you a brief example of the art of correlation function. If you're familiar with correlation, correlation normally compares two different variables, right? So I want to see how, let's say, age and income are correlated. So correlation in its context normally compares two independent variables or, or two associated variables um, with each other. So um, what we're going to be talking about is autocorrelation, right? And that's how a variable correlates with itself. And so, and by the way, here are a couple packages since I'm not going to actually cover correlation here. I mean, I could I could look at the different rows of this fuel data set and see how they were correlated. I believe we did that last time a little bit. But um, anyway, today we're going to talk about autocorrelation, which is the how a variable is correlated with itself. And to do that, I can look at lags. So I'm looking at the say time t, the the, the current time versus t minus one, which would be one time ago. Say, say I'm in, in July right now, and I want to look at a month back. That's a lag of one. That's June. A lag of two would be May, et cetera. So I can look backwards and see how um, the, the data is correlated. So here I'm using lags of quarters. I'm going to use this lag plot to come up with the relationships between these different uh, prior periods in, in so with this output right here, I can look at the, the association between current time versus one quarter back. Um, let me grab the, the pen here. Um, and really, there's it's kind of hard to see any correlation here in this lag one. Here, I wish this, this, I wish this line right here wasn't um, Drawn, but it is because uh, it kind of takes away from our eyes what we what we see in the data. Now look here, there's there is kind of a relationship here within these these points. In other words, they're not pushed back so far. Here, obviously, you know, quite a bit of scatter between here and here, so that takes away from the correlation co coefficient. So this is, a, by the way, this is an inverse correlation, right? This would be a negative correlation. This is a positive correlation, right? Everything moving from the lower left to the upper right. This again is not a lot of correlation. We've got some inverse correlation here, not much correlation here, but definitely a positive correlation here. So anyway, um, that gives you an idea of what the, the plot is showing. 
But an easier way to do that numerically, it, again, is to use the autocorrelation function. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to run this autocorrelation function, and this gives me exactly a, a plot of what I just went through, but much more easier to see, right? So we saw that original negative correlation at lag two. We saw that very positive correlation at lag four. We saw another negative correlation at lag six, and then a positive correlation at lag eight, and that's as far as we went in our, our data set. So again, here, 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 and here we covered. So this is essentially representing the, the same information, and we can get numerical um, values, and we will be getting uh, numerical values for this autocorrelation function and how they're related. Um, just to let you know, just as an example, let's let's do something real quick that shows no correlation, right? So if I, what uh, noise would look like, so I'm going to set a seed to 30, and I'm just going to create 50, um, 50 uh, normal uh, cases of from a normal distribution. All right. So X is normally distributed, um, actually standard standard normal, um, zero, standard deviation one. And then if I plot what that data would look like um, across the generation of the series, this is what it would look like. And then if I try to determine whether any of these points were correlated with the previous, I would run the autocorrelation function, and I would see that really it there's not much to it. Um, you, we can see from the ACF that, that this is all within uh, expectations. Oh, and so one other thing is that, you know, these bounds that are created, which is essentially uh, plus or minus 2 over the square root of t, where t is actually the length of the time series itself. Here, again, we have 50 um, um, in the series itself. So, uh, so it'd be plus or minus two divided by the square root of 50, or, or about uh, 0.28 here, plus and minus. And we would think that 95% of those uh, ACF values would fall within that. And actually, all of ours fall within here for, the, for this. Okay, so uh, real briefly, that is immunovariate, bivariate, and the ACF introduction. Next time, we're going to actually talk about some methods, and we're going to talk about the, the average method, the naive method, the seasonal naive, and drift methods in forecasting. Again, always love to hear your comments. You can email me at Hotmail or my work address, um, email address, and I look forward to seeing you 